Hey everyone, Bob Steve here with First Updates Now, checking out Team 4635 Peppertech Bot Busters. Here with Alexis, Pato, and Gus. We're gonna be talking about their amazing robot, three times regional winners at this season. Talk about their telescoping arm, dual game piece uh, intake. Really excited to walk around the robot with us here on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. Animark is your one-stop shop for all your educational robotics needs. From mechanical, electrical, tools, and hardware, Animark has over 200 years of first-team experience and offers high-quality and affordable solutions for the robotics mobility and competition markets. Head on over to Animark.com to get started. All right, Alexis, talk to us about your, your chassis and your pivot system that you have for your arm. Yeah, sure. First of all, this is a, a small robot. It's 23 by 23 inches, the parameter and we have a steel belly pan in order to get the uh, central of gravity low as possible. Over here, we have some brass plates in order to, to man maintain the, the weight of everything, and we have the battery over here. We use Mark IIs, we have four modules, one in each side, and we also have uh, the line that, that is attached to the, to the uh, chassis. Over here, we're going to pass to our next mechanism. It's the arc mechanism. This mechanism consists of a rail that is used to move the entire arm and it has a pivot in order to, to make the, the transitions. Over here, we have a belt, a timing belt. This is used uh, in a pulley system that is over here on, the, on this plate, on the pivot. And basically what it does, it maintains the, the arm in place and it gives the direction in a proper way and it reduces uh, backlash as other teams have been uh, using uh, gears or sprockets. Now, let's head it to, over to Pato, Dean's List, congratulations. Thank you. Now, talk about your, your arm, your, your telescoping arm and your intake. Seems like your intake only has two wheels. I assume all the game pieces go through there. And just talk about your extension as well. Yeah, so this year, since uh, we decided to do a telescopic arm, we have a 4x4 frame and then 3x3 frame and 2x2 frame. It's all controlled in this gearbox. Right here, we have three NEOs uh, controlling the extension, the arm, and then two NEOs also within the same gearbox connected to the pivot system. So within one gearbox, we put five NEOs that controls two mechanisms. And these brass plates you see here, as well as here, are for also maintaining the CG as low as possible as we can. And these are like very well lubricated all, all time. And our cable chain is mounted on a pin slot that is like, we haven't seen much of those. So we like that. And then it's controlled. It's controlled by a belt, the first and second stage. And then the second to third stage is controlled by a, a rope. And then I think that's it. Everything in our bot is in-house made. Everything was made in our uh, workshop. And then intake. This is, I think, like the third to fourth version of our intake. Wow. We had uh, a like 2018-ish style intake at first, and then it was too heavy. So we did just two rollers that has cones and cubes in the same position, no pneumatics. We got rid of all the pneumatics, so it's really light. We, the wrist, we could have it a lot a lot faster sin, since it was a lot lighter. So we have a Neo 550 controlling that. The wrist that control that goes to a gear that is that has a max spline crossed in it that just controls a Neo that controls the two rollers. The, we call these Mamba Pose, like a black Mamba, <laughs> since our robot is full black. So this is Mamba Pose. And then if you want, we can try uh, grabbing some pieces. Yeah, let's, let's do that. Okay. Let's show us how the intake is able to gather all the pieces. Okay. The left corner. Okay, cool. The left corner.
So you guys like to go in all of the levels? Yeah, uh, what we tried to maintain while designing it, designing it was a lot of like flexibility as to like scoring on each side of our robot. So we can score high, mid and low on both sides of the robot. We can do single uh, substation on, on whichever side of the robot. So we like that flexibility. And we control the pivot and the wrist with some mag SRX mag encoders that the pivot is mounted onto a one inch steel tube that connects to our plates that were made in house. And as well here, SRX mag encoder that connects to the gear ratio as well. And I think that's a perfect transition into Gus. Talk about your software, your presets, how you use, I mean, incorporate all those encoders together for your amazing telescoping arm. Well, from, from the start, we decided that we wanted to have no issues with setting the positions of things at the start and that we wanted to score from both sides. So that led to two to decisions. We wanted to have absolute uh, uh, measurement systems for, for both. Uh, and what we decided was on on potentiometers that we already had integrated with the Swerve because we use a, a module. Uh, but we decided to change because the speed of the arc was too fast for for the potentiometers. So we changed to SRX mag encoders, which is what we now use, and they go directly into the Spark Max to uh, to not have any issues with uh, cables or anything else. It keeps it very very simple. Then. When, with deciding on using both uh, both sides, what we decided to do in, in auto is uh, separate the position for, of the robot itself from the rotation of the robot, so we could flip autonomous uh, from f starting from the front and going like that to starting from the back and also that working as well, and and that we use it as well as uh, with April tags because we use post estimation on, on the April tags to keep our autos more, um, well, better basically. And we have a Limelight 3 right here, which we use to align. But what we saw is that, I mean, since our intake is pretty big, we saw that we could grab a cone like over here and it would align itself to the robot. So we decided to put a distance sensor. And so we can align to the piece, to the piece itself. And that allows us to do cycles much more, more faster. A lot faster. of software. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, the whole, uh, I mean, we also have the LEDs. This help us a lot from just the setup because our robot can start from different starting configurations. So this side tells us if the arc is in the correct starting position so the PID doesn't do any weird stuff or anything. So we make sure that we have the correct starting configuration and we can start from both sides. Um, that also helps us uh, in autonomous. We can start either way. And so we also decided to have more autonomous things Intel operated. Uh, what we did is, if, for example, in taking a piece, we just press one button and that moves the robot down to a, a, a set position. And then when it detects that it has a piece inside via current limits and the distance sensor, it uh, returns it to the position, to the, uh, yeah, the Mamba pose. And with that, we have a, we have the brass plates over here lower to the to the floor to get a better CG that allows us to have even more rotation and, uh, and acceleration on the chassis. We currently don't uh, dynamically limit our chassis with acceleration because he's a really good driver. <laughs> so, yes. Uh, uh, yeah, we, we also can score, I mean, on both sides very easily. We have uh, a set positions for both sides and and uh, we can change the, like all the speed poses and all that kind of stuff. Do you guys have a camera on both sides to be able to see uh, uh, where exactly you guys are? Because when, like, you have a limelight here, but what yeah, about on the other side? We have this one right here. Oh, and that's, right. That we use it as well for April, ta okay. April tags, so that helps us on both sides. We can, we can align with the tape on this side, but this side, uh, since the limelight's over here. So. Well, 4635 Prepatech Botbusters. Well done, robot. Representing Mexico over here, three-time regional winners and Dean's List. Congratulations to your amazing accomplishments so far. And excited to see what you guys do here, here on the Johnson Field. Good luck, guys. Thank you. Thank you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors.
Animark is your one-stop shop for all your educational robotics needs. From mechanical, electrical, tools, and hardware, Animark has over 200 years of first-team experience and offers high-quality and affordable solutions for the robotics mobility and competition markets. Head on over to Animark.com to get started. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.